yeah, so I'm going to be doing a lot more of these kind of tutorial videos and, you know, giving away secrets and stuff. So um, please subscribe and share my videos. Uh, I really appreciate it. And, uh, yeah, great lines and memorize. Okay. Hello? Yeah. Hey, everybody. This is Rod from Bet Rod's Guiding and Fishing Company. Uh, today I want to talk about finesse twitching for coho salmon. Now, this is something probably some of you are already doing, and uh, good on you, because it's uh, something I used to do, and I kind of got away from it because I got a little more into the heavier twitching. Uh, we had a lot of years of high water, and that kind of was kind of good for the heavier 3 8 ounce, half ounce jigs, and a little bit more aggressive twitching. But the last two seasons, we've had quite a bit of low water. Like some of the waters that I usually catch coho are actually dry. That's how low it is. And uh, the fish are kind of not acting the same. They're definitely responding better to very light jigs, light uh, light kind of movement. And uh, upon starting to do this a lot, I've come to realize that there's some stuff that you need to be implementing into your game if you want to really improve it. Um, yes, I've had some kind of amazing uh, realizations doing this that uh, this little differences that make a huge difference. So yeah, today I'm going to talk about the jigs I use, uh, the tackle I use, very important, and then bit into the technique. But uh, first of all, jigs. Um, I know I've said this before with larger jigs that I my favorite twitching jigs are marabou. Uh, there's various reasons for that. I like the I like how they look. I like that you're able to blend colors well with them. You don't have to have hard lines in your colors. And I also like that uh, you can uh, that they undulate really good. And also they have a good sink rate because the actual marabou doesn't, it's not super thick and bulky, so it doesn't slow your sink rate. Because with twitching, it's all about that sink. You, you hop it up and it sinks. You hop it up and it sinks. Now if you have a heavy material, like a, like a bunny fur or even the rubber jigs, but the, there is a time and place for those where I've actually done really good and I'll kind of get into that later. But um, Marabou for this finesse fishing, Marabou I've found to be by far the best. I've tried other jigs, not having nearly, I'm, I'm able to test on because I, I have been going to a spot with a lot of fish, so I'm actually able to test on these fish what they like and what they don't like, and Marabou is definitely one of the days. So, um, people always want to know colors. Uh, I have found you don't really need a ton of different colors on the jig department. You can have your basic kind of Probably my number one favorite is a black and purple, which I I sell them. I call it the hooker jig. Just that's what I originally called it. It's just a black and purple jig. This one's got an eye. I've been playing around with painting eyes on my heads. Doesn't matter. Most of the fish I've been catching don't have eyes painted on them. Uh, yeah, so that's the that's my hooker. Been getting a few on the blue, the blue and black, the blue and purple, and uh, pink. I have one spot I fish that kind of, it kind of runs a little bit murky, like not murky murky, but like I'd say three feet visibility in there. And that pink one has been just killer for me, just loving it. So there's that one. And then the other day I went out and I kind of blended. So this one's got blue, purple, and pink. So I kind of did a blendo and yeah, that was my number one jig the other day. But I don't think you need, I think if you carry it, oh, and then I will mention chartreuse. Now that would be for quite dirty conditions and uh, you know I don't run into that too often when I'm coho fishing and typically if I find the water to be really dirty I kind of leave and go look for some cleaner water because with twitching it's such a visual technique that to have really poor conditions is not that great but that would be your choice if you were stuck fishing the poor conditions. Yeah so now we're going to move on to oh on the one more thing on the jig department is yeah, these are quarter ounce jigs. Um, these ones here, this is a 3 8 here, so you can see the difference. There's your 3 8 there's your quarter. Now the, the profile is a little bit bigger on this one. It's not so much the profile of the feather that I'm worried about, it's the weight. The weight, this one's able to sink much slower and you're able to move it much slower. This one you've got to kind of keep it moving because it's heavy and if you don't, it'll be down the bottom. And then you've got this guy here, this is a 1 8 And this is for like very shallow water. Maybe some real spooky fish that want a really soft presentation, but the one eighth does come into play. So that would be your, that would be the smallest one I Can would. Can you put twitch. them all out side by side? Absolutely. So there's your. Can you here? Let's try this way, just so people can really see the size difference. Oops. <laughs> So three eighth, quarter, one eighth. 
Now, one thing, one thing about fishing these smaller jigs, the quarter and the eighth, especially the eighth, is, is really, really hard to get that thing to cast out there. It doesn't, oh, you'd almost have to have like four pound braided line to get this thing to cast well. But there's a little hack I learned when I was fishing for smallmouth bass, and that you take a little piece of these, these worms, this is called a stick worm, or some people call them Senko worms, because that's the original. So you take these stick worms, now what it is, why you use these worms is these worms are impregnated with salt. Salt is heavy, that makes it sink. So like it's gonna, it's a way to give your jig weight, but subtly. Like yeah, you could just go to a bigger head, but this is not gonna add another quarter, another eighth of an ounce of weight, but it will give you a little bit more weight and you might get another 10, 12 feet distance out of that, which could mean the difference. So all you do with this is you just pull that feathers back Slide, slide that worm on there and just and as you can see you barely notice it like it you know what I mean it's just in there just gives you that little bit more casting distance so that's a good trick and uh, the bass guys know that one that's a trick for them they use that when they're casting very these very late one eighth even smaller than one eighth jigs for smallmouth they'll they'll add that and you can also use a bit of, of uh, super glue on this and super glue it on there so it doesn't slide around anyhow there's that hack Okay, so that, that I think, oh, one other thing I tried, now this, these rubber leg jigs, when I tried them, it's a quarter ounce rubber leg jig, when I try, I use, as you know, I use rubber leg jigs for coho quite a bit, but I found with these small ones, I was just watching it, when I'm twitching it, this jig sinks so slow, Whew, just so slow, and that's just not what you're trying to achieve here. Compared to the marabou, the marabou is just whoosh, and sink so that kind of I kind of haven't done much with these now it might come into play extreme shallow water where you actually want it you can't let it sink fast that might be the only time that would come into play I have to do more expensive experimenting with, with the rubber legs but for now marabou has been my favorite by far it just when you twitch it it just cuts the water and gets back down so you lift back down but I'll get into technique later so that's that's your jig selection don't get crazy with it have a few different colors and just it's all about your technique it's not like running through all the what jig should i use is not what's at play here. it's definitely technique and uh having the right cadence to your twitching okay so now moving on to tackle now so typically when i this one here this i have these on long rods right now typically when i'm fishing three eighth and half ounce jigs twitching I'm fishing a seven and a half foot rod with a 3,000, uh, like a 3,000 size, we'll call it, spinning reel with 15 to 20 pound braid. That's my favorite, 20 typically. Now when you move down to these, to this finesse twitching, that just does not work. I went, I actually, the other day I went out and I tried to buy some 10 pound braid for twitching. I really wanted the suffix 832, which so far I found is the best by far for this twitching. Its diameter is half of this stuff that I bought. I'll get into that later. But So I bought this 15. It was all they had at the one store I went to. And I thought, you know what? I'll try 15. See how I do? Well, <laughs> I got to the spot. And I cast out. Immediately wind knot started. And it got all the line in here. You can see it's still messed up. It got all loosey-goosey in here. And this was a softer style of braid. And it just would not work with my small jigs. It was a nightmare. So I've actually gone, I'm going to put this on one of my seven and a half foot rods and this will be for casting, uh, this line here will be for casting the bigger jigs because it just it would not work with the small jigs. So what I've come up with for the best line to use is for casting these small jigs is a 10 pound braided line. Now the first stuff I got, which worked fabulous, was Suffix 832 braid. And I, 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 at the time when I bought it, I didn't, I had... It was the only 10 pound I could find. So I just bought it, put it on there, and it was just bombing. I could just bomb it out there. It was amazing how far I could cast it. And it was working really well. I was catching lots of fish. And I went to this small river I fished that's like really treed over. And I had just a banner day of catching coho, but I was getting caught in trees. Fish were busting me off, coming loose. My stuff would get wrapped in trees. By the end of the day, I lost so much line that I had to get re-spool. So then I went to, I went to look for some more 10 pound. I couldn't find it anywhere. 
So finally I found some, a store with some Daiwa J braid 10 pound. So I put that on and then I went back to my spot a couple days later and when I cast it out, I noticed that I was getting 20 to 30 feet less casting. So right away I was like, hmm, that's really weird. Like 10 pounds, 10 pounds. But I guess with these braids, they're all made slightly different. And that Suffix 832 was just, it just cast the small jig far better. And then when I got home later, I started to review all the lines to look at stuff like diameter of that. And I found out that the Suffix 832 had a 0.06 diameter, millimeter diameter. And then this one had a 0.15. So as from what I can gather, the one, the Suffix 832, it was twice as thin at the same strength of 10 pound. It was twice as thin. So that is why I was getting all that distance casting. And that's also why my jig was sinking so well. So anyhow, that, that's something to really keep in mind. So I'm going to strongly suggest you look at that Suffix 832 braid and go with that in 10 pound. Because it's really important. With, I noticed that just twitching these jigs and being able to watch what I'm doing, that different lines react really differently so with the same jig so the look the, this this line here with the heavier thicker with the not heavier with the thicker line when you lift up when you twitch the jig it's much slower to sink you lift much slower to sink that original one i had the 832 you twitch it up and the thing would out of sight out of sight and every time i caught fish it's always when the jig stays out of sight so with that heavy with that thicker line that jig's staying up in that water column. They're just, they're not committing to it. They're not coming up to commit to it. So you've got to get it down into them. So yeah, that, that line is crucial. So yeah, that, that, that's my thing on line choice. And people always ask about leader as well. I mean, I think a leader is good. Um, does it help with the fish? I don't know, when this thin, with this thin, thin braided line, I don't know that the fish are seeing that leader. But if you believe they are, definitely go to a leader. Learn a good knot, like a double uni or an FG knot. There's a bunch of different knots you can do to join your braided line to your leader. Uh, I have been doing a bit of leaders. I did some eight pound floral was one I was doing, this stuff here. Great line, using that one. I just use a double uni knot. With my bigger jigs, I'll do it, go to 10 pound. The suffix here, I've been using that 10 pound. But um, especially for the bigger, thicker braided lines, I kind of like to have a leader, but with this thin one, I've just, I haven't noticed a difference, honestly. I, I, what would happen is I'd get, you know, get it caught in a tree or whatever, I'd bust off and my, le my leader that I tied on would all bust off, it'd be down a straight braid. And in my panic with fish rolling everywhere, I would just tie it right to the jig and cast in and boom. So I was kind of like, okay, don't need a leader. So maybe there's a time and a place, but I, I just know from what I've seen, they seem to bite it. It's more about what you're doing with it. So yeah, that's about it on tackle. Um, as far as rods go, what we got here is a, uh, this is an eight foot six. This is a medium strength, moderate action. Now with, people ask like, what's, what's the difference in action? Okay, so you have moderate slow action, which is too soft and bouncy. Moderate action, which is, it's flexible, has more flex, and then fast action where the rod's kind of stiff. Now for my, for the heavier jigs, fast action is the way I go. Seven and a half foot fast action. With these, I much prefer the longer eight foot six rod with the moderate action. It's just, it seems to be just perfect. And also probably the main reason I go to this longer rod this with, the, with the moderate action is for casting. Because that when you go to cast with that softer rod, you can whip that tip and it makes that little jig fly out way farther. So, you know, you're, would it be better to have a fast, fast action? I don't know, you would definitely lose casting distance, which I'm always trying to get a good casting distance. I find with Coho Sound, quite often the guy who can cast the farthest gets the most fish. So there's that. So anyhow, that's my choice with this finesse technique. I use the eight foot six. Um, you could use an eight, you could use a nine, whatever you want. I'm not stuck in my ways. This is just what I have. I use, I've had these rods for years, using them for spinner fishing. They work really good for this, so that's what I'm doing. And that, yeah, that's about it. And then on a reel, the reel, now again, there's a, so many different kinds. I don't think there's a better anything. I usually choose Shimano just because I've been using them for years and they just work for me. I haven't had a lot of breakdowns, haven't had a lot of problems in my Shimano reel, so I just kind of stick with them. Um, I use the 3000 series. And the reason I do that is because I often will switch between different techniques. 
and I kind of want an all-purpose reel. Now for this finesse fishing, a 2500 or even a 2000 size spinning reel would be fine. You, with this small diameter braid, you'll be able to fit tons on there. Line capacity won't be an issue. So just choose, use what you got, or if you go to buy one, use what you like. It's all gonna work. Like I say, it's kind of, I will say that the more you spend on a spinning reel, you definitely will get longer casts and smoother. That's what you get for money. It's definitely just a better quality reel. It just does everything a little bit better. But that's up Whoops, to you. Sorry, hold on. <laughs> my, I started zooming in. My hand is going numb. Okay, sorry. All right, so uh, now on to technique. So this, there's a bunch of different techniques. Depends on the actual water you're fishing. So you're gonna with these finesse techniques you're typically not going to be fishing a big deep fast flowing river that your heavier jigs will come into play there these will not get down we tried one day i was guiding one day and i tried to get one of the guys to fish these small jigs because we weren't really getting them on the bigger jigs and he's he tried it was coaching him well he just said i keep seeing the jig on the surface i'm like yeah it's not going to work here there was too much current just nothing was working in our favor it was lots of water deep water fast water so that's not where you're gonna use it. But in, in like slower moving water, lakey water, frog water, if you wanna call it that, places that coho love. Coho love like sloughs and backwaters and bays and, and just these lazy places for them to hide. And it doesn't even, they, they're not looking for deep, people get caught up looking for deep water. I've seen coho holding in a back bay three feet deep and they're just loaded in there. And this technique is, I wish I had this technique back in those days because I was catching fish, but I would have been just creaming them with this technique because it's just, it's slower, it's more methodical, and you can really attract those fish that are, so you'll get all the, the really, really active fish on the heavier stuff, but when you go to this technique, you're going to get those spookier fish, even. They, they seem to go for it. So what the technique I've been doing lately is, so the, like you probably saw my video of Coho Madness I filmed with Danina where we were out doing this technique. And that day, because we were in a spot that was a little bit of depth and had a little bit of current, I was casting upriver, and most of my fish I was getting on the initial cast would hit, bloop, drop, and I'd just go to do my first little movement of the jig and there'd be fish on. So there, that just shows you like they love the drop. The initial drop, if you're putting it near them, boom, they'll grab it. So with knowing that, I know that that speed of that drop is crucial. So these jigs here, these marabou, thin, you know, not big, not a ton of marabou there, has that nice drop, quick drop in the water column. They seem to like that. So what I'll do, like, so, um, yeah, so you're out fishing, like, you're in, like, a, a back bay, say. Not moving, the water's not moving much, maybe four to five feet deep. You cast it out there, let it sink. Give it some time to sink. You want that thing to get down near bottom, give it maybe four or five seconds. If you get hung up, so what? At least you know how deep it is. Let it get down, and then just lift, and then reel. Lift and then reel. You're not cracking it. It's just because if you, with this with this small jig, if you crack it, it's going to spend its whole time up. It'll go right to the surface, maybe even flop out of the water. So you just lift it, let it drop. So you lift, let it drop, reel up the slack. Lift, let it drop, reel up the slack. Lift. And uh, that, that seems, from what I've been doing lately, that seems to be the best overall method. Another method I've been doing that's been quite successful is to, I cast out, let it sink down where I think it's close to bottom, and then I just go pop. Let it sink, pop. And the same thing, you're reeling the slack, but just pop. So it's not a heavy jerk, it's just a pop. So I may be moving that jig six, eight inches max, just pop, reel a bit, pop, reel a bit, pop, reel a bit. And uh, those are sort of the two main ones I've been going with. Uh, there's one more technique I was doing in another spot where I cast out, let her sink down, then I'd reel a bit slow reel and then lift and then so more that's almost like a swim you're almost swimming that jig you're not just twitching yes yeah, so you're uh, with that technique you're not just twitching you're that's more of a swim jig technique you're just kind of real 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 with the odd little jerk real 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 jerk and those are sort of the main techniques i found to work um another thing i will say is that when those fish bite these smaller jigs like this because with the heavier jig, you, you know, you lift, it goes down, and your lift, because it's a bigger jig, your lift's more vigorous. So when a fish has got it, because they always seem to bite it on the drop, when you go to do that next twitch, 
you just kind of set the hook by by nature. But with this lighter twitch, a lot of times you'll be going in, and you'll just go you'll go to lift it for that next little lift, and you just feel like a little tension. And I found the best thing to do is reel. I tried popping and setting a hook, and a lot of times my jig would fly out of the water. And the best way is if you go up and you go down and you, you go to do your next lift and you feel any tension, just reel, reel right into it and just and then you got fish on. And that's that reeling in with these these deadly hooks, like if you got good hooks on there and you just give it a good reel, bang, you got the fish. And uh, yeah, that's about it for technique. Um, mess around, you know, message me on YouTube, let me know if you've come up with a new technique, I'd love to try it too. So uh, yeah. Hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, get out there and get after these coho. There's still another few weeks left in the season and lots of time to get out and twitch up some, you know, beautiful coho. And I just want to mention to you that our daughter, Reagan, if you're, you know, asking questions on our YouTube channel, sometimes you'll see my daughter answering. She's helping us out with our YouTube channel and she's, uh, you know, corresponding with me to get the right answers for you. And she's uh, not a bad little fisherman herself, so she might have the answer without even talking to me. So. Uh, hopefully we can get her out soon and get her into some coho before our season's over. But uh, yeah, until next time, tight lines and bent rods.